I call Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Speaker. This particular amendment bill is one typical of national governments, which are always seeking to find ways to reduce spending on social services. Yep. At the same time, protecting its voter constituencies, those on higher incomes, those who it wishes to protect. That's right. That's not wrong. That is exactly what this government is doing, and most people can see it. And this <laughs> government is careless whether or not these, their cost-cutting ways will damage the effectiveness of social policy. This is a bill which is badly researched, ill-considered, and is based fundamentally on national party dogma. It's a bill which will exacerbate and not improve social inequalities, and it will degrade the quality of government services and not improve them. Now, nobody opposes sensible measures which would make the provision of government services, especially social housing, more efficient or provide the same services at a better cost, but never at the expense of worse outcomes for people. And that, I'm afraid, is inevitably what this amendment bill is going to do. And there are common themes throughout national social housing legislation. Firstly, to minimise the role of the state. Secondly, to abdicate responsibility for social housing to others. Thirdly, to provide as little money as possible and contract others to take responsibility. Fourthly, to push as many people out of state housing as it possibly can and to favour non-government organisations who are not always capable of the function. And uh, we can reflect on the Salvation Army mm -hmm. and the decision it made not to get involved. Yep. Probably the organisation in the country best able to do so chose not to do so, and for very good reasons. Right. And this bill and this legislation allows the government to pretend that it will provide social housing more cheaply. But in fact, it won't. It won't. It'll just push it off to somebody else. And it will allow the government to avoid full accountability for social housing. And it will fail to protect people against exploding rents, a huge problem in this country, Mr Speaker. And lastly, the government doesn't even try to support local councils in providing public rental housing or elderly persons housing in this country, thus letting them off the hook too. And the amendment bill is just as objectionable as the Principal Act in two ways. First of all, it relies on that policy of reviewable rents, a bureaucratic assessment of the ability of tenants to move into private accom accommodation, when the real problem is that rents in places like Auckland and Christchurch, based on simple unavailability of enough homes, is the real problem. And secondly, Mr Speaker, it will reduce the role of Housing New Zealand. And this amendment actually takes that a step further okay. by preventing Housing New Zealand from giving advice to ministers, thus sidelining that very important organisation. And it reserves that role now to MB. And that's a mistake because MB will only be a contract supervisor, essentially, and it will not have the institutional knowledge that is necessary to provide the service at the level we expect it to be. And ministers will, of course, will be empowered to give directions about what is to be done. And it's easy to see where that might lead. The results are likely to be social housing provided at very great arm's length from the government and its agencies. And it will give more power to ministers who are inevitably going to take a more political approach, a more dogmatic approach, not aimed at looking at the best interest of the most vulnerable people in the community, despite what they say over there, but aimed at financial results fundamentally. And that ultimately means more housing deprivation, state houses much too hard to get, non-government providers imposing their own policies and practices, and we don't know what they may be. And most of all, Mr Speaker, very uncertain outcomes for low-income people who are dependent on the state for their housing needs. That, Mr Speaker, is not the Kiwi tradition, and it is not acceptable as a role for the state in this country. 
The price of su suppressing demand, which is what this is really all about, is much too high in social terms. It will cause reduced health and well-being, increased poverty, putting more families at risk, compromising social cohesion, and exacerbating the creation of a disaffected underclass of people in New Zealand. Despite the government's aims that it would have a lenient approach when it comes to reassessing state tenancies, people will inevitably be nudged out of their homes and effectively, Mr Speaker, bullied out of their homes. The government will continue to sell those homes and they will build too few of them. And you only have to take a quick look at this budget to come to that conclusion that this government has no intention of trying to meet the demand that is already there and a, a demand which is not being met now. And that, Mr Speaker, is the real issue. This government is not actually willing to meet the need and that's really what this legislation is about. It will artificially seek to suppress demand rather than try to, to meet the genuine housing needs of people in this country. The bill itself may be seen as a relatively minor uh, provision, but it is another step in the wrong direction. As others have said, Mr Speaker, what is really needed in this country is a genuine social housing service. Not just buildings, but a true public service with the experience and the resources needed. This bill goes in exactly the opposite direction. The government will instead transfer large sums of money to community housing organisations through contract payments, but these are really still just subsidies, so nothing much will have changed, and the landlords, of course, will rub their hands in glee. These organisations will own the housing, funded, though, by the taxpayer, and they will profit from it, and they will compete from it, and as an inevitable result, Mr the Speaker, they will try to increase rents, and that is not in the best interest of either tenants or the taxpayer or anybody else indeed in this country. And that is actually the most significant flaw of all in this whole new social housing regime of which this bill is just one more minor step in the wrong direction. Now there will be more diversity, and that is potentially a good thing, potentially a good thing, but it's also a very risky thing if it's not properly done. And I don't trust some of the providers to whom this function will be entrusted to do that properly. Mr Speaker, for all of those reasons, New Zealand First opposes this bill. It's a retrograde step. It emasculates Housing New Zealand. It seeks to reduce government accountability for housing, and it should not be passed. I call John O'Naylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What